So, I told you about this a little bit last week, but you know, one of the motivations I had for thinking the things that I've thought through, the motivation I had for thinking them through was because, well, I, I, it, 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 it seemed self-evident to me, let's say, and I think that was partly from reading Jung, but not, but it, that just helped me clarify it, was that, you know, it was sort of Jung's contention that we had a organic development of a metaphysical ethic that was embedded in, in religious tradition and that basically unfolded, let's say, in the West till about 1600, 1500, something like that and then science emerged and we got unbelievably technologically powerful on, and using a certain view of the world, you know, we're so technologically powerful but we're still not very wise and that just seems to me to be a bad combination and I thought about that a lot, it's like, okay, well, how do you handle the combination of exceptional technological power and, and, and an impaired ethic, let's say, something like that, underdeveloped ethic, or one even in which you have no faith, because, you know, it, it seems the foundational elements of it are irrational, they're, they're in mythology, they're in religion, they, they don't fit well with the scientific worldview. How do you rectify that problem? And, well, that's a tough problem, you know, it's a crazy problem, and certainly it was the problem that Jung was trying to address, there's no doubt about it, and along with that went an associated problem, which, which was, you know, what happened in the 20th century, which was so awful, and in so many places, it was just so unbelievably brutal and terrible, and, and it was perpetrated by millions of people, and they were individual people, and they weren't that much different from normal people, in fact, they were normal people, and so, the other thing that struck me was that it would be better if that sort of thing didn't happen anymore and so I was trying to figure out what the hell could possibly be done about that and you know part of Jung's contention was well you had to understand yourself as a monster if you were ever going to maintain some control over the fact that you are in fact a monster and that that could come forth if the situation is correct it's like okay that seems reasonable and so well it seemed to me that you know, people had to become wiser and, of course, that's a very difficult thing to figure out because you can even question whether there is such a thing as wisdom, you know and, and then I thought, well, that's what the universities are supposed to do especially the humanities, mostly in particular it's supposed to make you wise, that's what it's for and it's doing a terrible job of that, in my estimation it's, it's more decimating people, as far as I can tell and undermining whatever ethic they have, rather than making people wise and, but I think that we have to become wise I don't think there's a choice, I think it's a matter of survival and it's more than that, because if you're wise in your own life you're going to have a way better life like, incomparably better, because you're, you're going to sleep soundly with a good conscience at night and you know, people say that's worth more than money and that's worth more than money I know lots of people who have lots of money and let me tell you money protects you you're as well protected from the world by money right now as you ever will be for the rest of your life because there's most of life's fundamental problems can't be solved with money you know, like rich people get divorced, they have affairs, their children get sick like, they have all the problems you have and that's partly because you're already rich and so you might think that if you had a bunch more money things would be better but it's just not true, in fact in some ways they, they might be worse because money can open up can open up the possibility of all sorts of temptations to you that you just can't afford at the moment so, well, so like economic, economics, we've already solved that problem fundamentally and we're rapidly solving it everywhere in the world, right? I mean, the world economy is growing so damn fast that you can't even imagine how you could possibly make it grow any faster it's crazy, we've lifted hundreds of millions of people out of poverty in the last 15 years, you know the UN set a goal by 2015, I think it was to cut poverty by half if I remember correctly, and they reached it two years early you know, it's like, it's unbelievable so, well, so then I started to try to understand what it might be to, to live and, and really what I was looking for to, was not so much to live a life that was wise but at least to live a life that wasn't pathologically unwise you know, and, and I thought of the sorts of things that people were doing to one another in the 
Auschwitz camps and in the Gulag Archipelago and all of that horror that was perpetrated on, on people as definitely unwise, whatever else you might say about it, it was unwise and so then I thought, well maybe there's a way to figure out how you could not do that and so that's, and I think that that's, my sense is that when you come to university to learn how to be a civilized person which is what's supposed to happen at university otherwise it's just a trade school and you might as well go to trade school as far as I'm concerned if you want to learn something that will get you a job it's like it's a lot faster and it's more certain and, and it's useful if you're not being taught to be a citizen at university then why bother with it? So, well, so that's what we're trying to figure out and, and that's part of that cloud of mythological fantasy that surrounds our culture that's, that's part of its deep history that we're trying to, you know, if you grapple with the humanities and with art and all of that that you're trying to, you're trying to master and, and incorporate and, and, and pull into you so that you're situated properly in history and, and you're not just floating in the void of, of, you know, this tiny individuality that's divorced from everything else you're weak in that circumstance alright, so